You're watching News 9 with me, Shruti. Speaking on the ongoing ADGP Ravindranath controversy, Home Minister KJ George has issued strict orders. In a press conference this evening, he said that any KSRP officer staging a protest on the issue will be dealt with strictly. He has also said that ADGP P. Ravindranath has been transferred only because he colluded with other KSRP officials. But he also went on to state that the ADGP is a good man and that fact will not change simply because allegations have been leveled against him. नोडी रविंद्रनाथ औरो ना यो तेल तीने रविंद्रनाथ औरो यार मेल नो औरो आव कमिश्नर विचारो औरो वाले औरो दल तरह नान वाले औरो दल तरह डीजीपी वाले औरो दल तरह मुख्यमंत्री रविंद्रनाथ औरो वाले औरे बट ये का अली प्रस्ते बंदी रुदो रविंद्रनाथ को नमक वाला अली प्रस्ते बंदी रुदो आ महिलेर कंप्लेंट को नमक और रविंद्र नाथ को इलाके के रविंद्र नाथ को सरकार रविंद्र नाथ को हेल्प करवा सर वो इंगाई तो आगे चिढ़े दर है सी आदर किया क्या ले आदर यावों ने यावों ने येर दोनों से मेहता सीएडी एनकेवर ले औरो औरा विचार है ले रविंद्र नाथ औरो औरो विचार नहीं है ले आ महिले और औरो विचार नहीं है ले आद ये न and well, for a detailed report on this, stay tuned to News 9 at 8.30. And moving on, the UPA government dragged its feet on it. But the new government has proposed that FDI to be increased to 100% in the defence sector. Let's take a look as to how this important policy decision will in fact help the underperforming military industrial complex. Arun Jaitley, who handles the portfolios of finance and defence, has spoken of the government's intent to hike the FDI cap in the defence sector to 100% from 26%. A cabinet note is in circulation regarding the matter to take the opinion of other government agencies. Now the draft proposal has been cleared. A step long overdue. The proposal by the government to hike forest direct investment has come as music to international arms companies as well as to private players in the country. India's defence military industrial complex has largely been a collection of non-performing public companies that have dragged its feet on weapon production and creation of state-of-the-art equipment. The proposal to hike FDI in defence will ensure that the paralysis of non-performance and skill shortage in the weapons production will be a thing of the past with accountability and innovation replacing it. UPA dragged its feet on it. The previous UPA government did mull of increasing the FDI to 26%, but there was no concrete steps taken on the ground on the matter as allies as well as some senior functionaries of the party were against the policy. How will it be graded? The Commerce and Industry Ministry has suggested a graded foreign investment ceiling. It has been suggested that a cap of 49% FDI for companies that do not transfer technology. Companies that allow transfer of technology will be given 74%, while those that manufacture state-of-the-art equipment and machinery will be given 100%. The cap on foreign investment will include investment that will be routed through FDI, portfolio flows such as through foreign institutional investors and investment by non-resident Indians. To ensure security, all the proposals will go through the Foreign Investment Promotion Board, which will be scrutinized by representatives from home affairs and security agencies. New jobs will be created. With 100% FDI in the defense sector, lakhs of jobs will be created in the country as these industries require lakhs of engineers with high skills to sustain it. The move could result in global companies setting up manufacturing bases in the country and employing local talent. It will also help in transfer of high-end technology and the creation of a base of highly skilled engineers for the country's military industrial complex. Who are the beneficiaries? India already has a series of engagements with Russia, its largest military hardware supplier, but the hike in FDI will make Russian military firms set up shop in the country. Israel will be another big beneficiary as it has turned out to be the country's second largest military hardware supplier. The US, which has lost out in the MMRCA deal, will in fact have an opportunity to reduce its investment in production of parts and concentrate more on research and development. India will be the biggest beneficiary as transfer of high-end technology will help its sagging projects get a new lease of life and also enhance it. 
the urgent tanks that have faced a series of delays could see new technological incorporations. The Army's much-delayed artillery and field guns could see innovative technology married to Indian ingenuity. The Tejas light combat aircraft that has been suffering from technical delays will be speeded up and its cost overruns can be controlled. The Navy that is suffering from an acute submarine shortage could see new acquisition and upgradation of its existing fleets. However, not all of them are happy with the idea of the defence cap being increased. Congress and the left are sceptical of any returns coming from an action like this. They are of the opinion that the country will become vulnerable if its defence sector is opened up for foreign investors. So conceptually as things stand today or the policy regime which is in place uh, allows for 100% FDI in defence uh, after uh, appropriately filtering it because of the national security imperative involved. So one would really have to wait and see as to how the government fleshes out the proposal, what is the meat that they put on the proposal, what is it that is going to be different from the regime in place uh, to really make an assessment as to whether uh, this uh, policy change is going to infuse or incentivize uh, defense manufacturing coming to India. It will compromise India's security. It will enable the foreign countries through these foreign companies to know the specification of Indian weapons and that will be hazardous for the country. When we are involved in a security problem more and more, not only because of Indo-Pakistan border, but of some other else reasons also, because of the rise of terrorism in the country, such a move is dangerous for the security of the country. The that they have taken on allowing a 100% FDI in areas of defense production is extremely dangerous. Now, FDI in defense production is an issue that has been of big contention in the parliament in the past. Not only we from the left and the Marxist party, but even the BJP in the past had opposed it on the grounds that leaving aside the economic aspect of it, on the grounds that such permission to allow foreign capital to work in defense-related areas severely compromises India's security interests. The new government has identified its list of priorities and is expecting to modernize the defense forces of the country in structure as well as weapons by building sustainable technologically driven industries that will help in making the armed forces join the next generation of scientifically superior forces. A News 9 report. Should Modi's life lessons be a chapter in the curriculum? Well, Modi doesn't feel so, and so do the historians and politicians. Take a look. BJP has left no stone unturned to adore Prime Minister Modi. And with him only proving to be the darling of masses, the Gujarat government decided on taking a step further in reverence of their leader. But their decision on including Modi's life chapter in the curriculum didn't go down well with the Prime Minister himself. On learning about BJP-governed states, including Gujarat, Madhya Pradesh and Rajasthan's interest, he took to Twitter to put a full stop to their grand plan. I'm reading in news that some states want to include Narendra Modi's life struggles as a part of their school curriculum. I firmly believe that the life story of living individuals should not be included as a part of the school curriculum. On expressing his disapproval subtly, Modi also advised the education departments on what should be taught in schools. India has a rich history of several stalwarts who made India what it is today. Young minds should read about these greats and emulate them. Well, Narendra Modi made his stand clear and the Gujarat government has respected its leader's decision. But what do the historians have to say? I believe that people who are in power, who are active, uh, they sh they, they, anything on their lives should be avoided. You know, they, they, it should not be taught at least in the schools because their life is is a they live their life every day, and we can actually watch what they are doing, what good they are doing, what bad they are doing. So children as well as adults, they can observe very closely and see what to follow, what to learn from their lives, and what to, what not to learn from their lives. Uh, so if something has happened earlier. Uh, about uh, some other people earlier, it was wrong, it shouldn't have happened. And good that uh, Modi took this step and uh, told them not to do it. 
Well, the historian has given a thumbs up to Modi's decision. But the CPI was not that kind enough to Modi's largest. कभी बड़प्पन की बात करने लग जाते हैं और बड़े बड़े लोग कभी छोटेपन की बात करने लगते हैं अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी जी की जीवनी आएगी कि नहीं आएगी ये अभी नहीं तय हुआ मैं तो उस बात की उम्मीद कर रहा हूं कि नरेंद्र मोदी जी ने बड़प्पन दिखा दिया क्योंकि उनके चाटुकारों ने उनका जीवनी जोड़ने का प्रयास किया मध्य प्रदेश और गुजरात में मैं समझता हूं कि नरेंद्र मोदी जी अपनी विराट हृदय का प्रदर्शन करें और कहें कि मेरा नाम का पाठ्यक्रम हटा के बाबा रामदेव का पाठ्यक्रम जोड़ दें it's true that Prime Minister Narendra Modi's rise from a mere campaigner in BJP to the Prime Minister of India in a span of 43 years is astounding. But everybody, including Modi himself, are of the opinion that Gujarat government's initial thought process was wrong. So one wonders, was the Gujarat government only intending to please its leader or was it for the larger good? Surely a debatable topic. A new start report. While the Modi-led BJP is the powerhouse at the center, the Jai Lalita-led AIADMK can be termed as the powerhouse among regional parties. Now, speculations are buzz that the two powerhouses might join hands to conquer the upper house of the parliament. Here's the report. Good friends to meet on 3rd June. Tamil Nadu Chief Minister and AIADMK Chief Jai Lalita will meet Prime Minister Narendra Modi on June 3rd. So, what's on the agenda? The Chief Minister is expected to present a memorandum to Modi. This memorandum will include some crucial issues relating to Tamil Nadu, which have been pending with the Government of India. The memorandum will also highlight some issues which require the urgent attention of the centre to safeguard the legitimate interests of the state and to propel the state on a faster growth path. The Tamil Nadu Chief Minister will also meet Finance Minister Arun Jaitley and discuss state affairs. Reconciliation after conflict. This is a question doing the rounds following Jaya's bid to reach out to Prime Minister Narendra Modi. Jaya Lalita, despite her friendly relationship with Modi, had boycotted his swearing in following the latter rolling out the red carpet for Sri Lankan President Mahinda Rajapakshe. She even went on to say that the Sri Lankan Premier's participation was unfortunate and Modi's invitation was ill-advised. Days after her protest, Jaya seems to be going back government in the run-up to the general elections. The BJP, though, had a clear majority. They did not need anyone's support. This meeting has had the rumor mill going again. The question being asked is whether Jaya Lalita will broach the subject of joining the central government. Why has it surfaced now? Well, the BJP needs little help in the Rajya Sabha if it needs to smoothly push through legislation. With 65 MPs of the National Alliance currently leads, the BJP could find a helping hand in the AIADMK, which has 11 MPs in the upper house. Or Jalalitha, an alliance with a party in power at the centre, could certainly help her in seeking. In a few days, Telangana and its residuary C Mantra will be born. And before Chandra Babu Naidu creates history by becoming the first chief minister of the newly born state, he is busy running errands. Take a look as to why. Chandra Babu Naidu is busy running errands. Yes, Chandra Babu Naidu is keeping himself busy making sure that he has full support of the centre before he takes up the reins as chief minister of the yet to be born state. Today, he met the Finance Minister Arun Jaitley to discuss key issues pertaining to Simandra. He expressed his concern over the state having no capital 